Hello, I'm Todd Tracy with the Tracy Law Firm in Dallas, Texas with another Todd Talk. Today I want to talk to you about the importance of how engineering plays a part in a vehicle crashworthiness case. Many times when uh, my clients hire my law firm, one of the biggest issues that we have to address is what was the speed that the vehicles were going and did that speed cause the injury because the safety systems did not work properly. Now, the problem that we have in these cases is that so much of the time, the engineers on the defense for the manufacturers, they increase the speed so dramatically that no safer alternative design or safety systems would have prevented the injury. So a lot of the times what we have to do is after the reports are produced for the plaintiff, and the reports are produced by the defense manufacturer, we have to make a determination, do we need to go conduct a test to prove that the defense theory is wrong? And that's what we've done in this particular case. In this particular case, the plaintiffs believed that the crash occurred at 41 miles per hour. And so what we did is we ran a crash test at 41 miles per hour so that it would create a certain amount of energy to create what's called a 39 mile an hour delta V, which is just a fancy way of saying what's the change in speed. Now the defense on the other hand, they believed that the vehicle was traveling 64 miles an hour, so we ran their theory at 64 miles an hour, so it would create a 60 mile per hour delta V or change in velocity. What we then did, we ran the crash test, out in California, we brought the vehicle back, the vehicles back to our crash lab here in Dallas, Texas, so that we could then take our Faro uh, imaging device, which is a, a Doppler radar system that makes a 4D model of the entire vehicle, so that we can then compare the crush, the two crash vehicles, with the crush from the actual vehicle. And when we did that, the results were quite astounding. Let me show you. We've taken the actual crash test vehicle and laid it out on what's called a Faro model, and that's what we see here on this diagram here. The red is the actual crash test. Now, what we have outlined in black is the crush from the defendant speed. They believed it was a 60 mile an hour delta V or 64 miles per hour. However, when you look at the crush line, they went well beyond what the crush line was or the crush profile on the vehicle. What does that tell us? This proves definitively, based upon engineering principles and principles of physics, that the defense was wrong. We then compare this, we then take the same vehicle. This is the this is the actual crash test vehicle, or this is the crash vehicle um, in, um, in red. We then use the line from the actual test where we believe the speed was at 39 miles per hour, and you'll notice the crush profile matches up literally identical. What does that tell us? This tells us from an engineering and physics standpoint that our crash speeds were 39 delta V or 41 miles per hour. Why is that critical? Well, in a crashworthiness case, if the speeds and the change in velocity are too great, then no safety system matters. However, we know for a fact that the vehicle industry can provide safety to any restrained occupant with an airbag that performs properly in delta Vs up to 45 miles per hour. Testing sometime is absolutely necessary to actually prove the defense position is wrong. And whenever you hire any law firm to take on the, the biggest industry in the world, which is the vehicle industry, you better be prepared to conduct crash testing to disprove the defense theory. This is Todd Tracy with another Todd Talk.